uh, we are going to have a you know, lecture on the uh, upper limb injury, upper limb trauma for children, uh, part one. That will be uh, uh, given by the Professor Jean Yu. Yu. And uh, uh, before the, before lecture, I would like to introduce you all, uh, Professor Ju. I can leave Professor Ju and then Professor Jerome that we have lecture uh, last week. Uh, they, they they are our intimate friend of Myanmar, especially uh, orthopedic surgery and pediatric orthopedic surgery, and uh, they. Both of them are, as I told you uh, last week, uh, they are the father of Myanmar spine surgery and scoliosis surgery. They have been in Myanmar for more than 15 years and they visited Myanmar very frequently. I mean, uh, two, two times a year for all of all these throughout 15 years. And uh, we have started with the our spine surgery and scoliosis surgery by uh, both of them, Professor Ju and Professor uh, Dikozi. And uh, actually, uh, we developed the spinal surgery unit and then spinal surgery uh, training program and scoliosis surgery in Myanmar uh, with them without their support without their effort and without their i mean uh, input we cannot have a spine surgery in myanmar and also scoliosis surgery in myanmar now we have been doing uh, own you know we can manage uh, uh, scoliosis surgery and spine surgery ourselves and also both of them are the uh, key and main contributor in development of the pediatric surgery, orthopedic surgery in Myanmar, uh, with with their support and with their help and with their leadership, we developed the Doctor Med Science uh, pediatric orthopedic uh, surgery in Myanmar, and also you know uh, a spinal surgery, a uh, Doctor Med Science uh, spine surgery in Myanmar. And uh, uh, actually, uh, more than uh, 500 cases has been operated by them. Uh, and then, you know, uh, they've been around Myanmar and they've been in the uh, Yango, Mandalay, and then some district in Myanmar. And in this revolution, uh, after coup, uh, they also helping us and then they are very uh, uh, much support to our revolution. And uh, uh, in this time of difficulty and difficult and the crisis time in Myanmar, I would like to say thanks to both of you and then Professor Jean uh, Duf and uh, Jerome Jigozi. Uh, 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 thank you so much for your support and your input to Myanmar. I think. Uh, because of your support and because of the, your input, I'm sure we will win this revolution. Thank you so much. We must win. Now, floor is your team. Yes, you can start. Can okay. you manage? Uh, yes, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. And uh, you, we share... Uh, actually, actually uh, here uh, in, in our panel, there's uh, altogether 11, but uh, most of them are online because we, 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 we this is a webinar. Okay. And also also uh, online and, you know, only, only our uh, Facebook, you know. Thank you. Okay, so um, the, we we actually we share the presentation. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I, we've seen that. Yeah. Okay. So um, good morning and. Uh...
good afternoon for you. And uh, first of all, we are very pleased to um, to meet you again uh, with uh, Jerome. Um, and uh, it's always a pleasure to share to share uh, information, to share educational uh, program with uh, our friend from Myanmar. And uh, we oh, we think about you and uh, we hope that we will uh, meet in uh, Yangu and in all Ma Myanmar very soon. And uh, we support your, your fight. Um, today, we will, uh, I will uh, speak about uh, upper limb trauma uh, in children. It's the first part. And, uh, and tomorrow, if it is OK, we will do the second part. So today, we will speak about the shoulder and humeral fracture. Um, it is 20% uh, uh, of all fracture in children. Um, the mechanism is a birth injury, child abuse, um, crash trauma, and uh, sports activity. Um, it's a, uh, so it is a very, uh, a very frequent uh, trauma in children. Um, in the, in, it's a particular trauma, and it is very different with uh, uh, adult trauma. The difference are due to the weakness of the child shoulder. The weakness is the growth plate. The growth plate is uh, uh, not very strength. Um, and the metaphysis bone is also a weakness because the biomechanical statute of uh, uh, growth plate and metaphysis is poor with the trauma. The strength is that there is a lot of muscle in the children, a lot of uh, very, uh, very uh, strong ligament. And uh, there is no rotatory curve, no tendon rupture. The, the bone is a weakness of the shoulder in uh, the child. And we always must remember, remember that. Uh, concerning the clinical features, it is evident that we, when there is trauma, there is pain, uh, swelling, uh, echimosis, uh, loss, uh, loss of function. And uh, um, the most important thing to do is a neurovascular exam because uh, there, is, uh, two, there are two nerves to check every time. Uh, the axillary nerve, uh, because it is a motricity of the deltoid and the sensibility uh, of, the, of the, um, the shoulder skin, and the radial nerve when there is an injury of the, of the humeral shaft. Um, concerning growth, we must remember that uh, growth in shoulder uh, is uh, uh, growth with a very intense activity uh, in the proximal humeral growth plate. Uh, it is 80% of the growth of the humerus. Uh, the periosteum is very thick and there is a very good muscular coverage with, uh, with the deltoid. So uh, that means that there is a high possibility of uh, uh, of uh, uh, remodeling and uh, of uh, um, improvement uh, in, the, in the deformities with uh, the residual growth. So we always must think about that because uh, that this change, the, the, therapeutic, in the, um, the therapeutic program uh, in case of uh, injury in the children, uh, if we compare with, a, with an adult. So uh, we can begin with the clavicle fractures. Uh, the clavicle fractures, uh, we must remember that it is the first bone to ossify. And uh, uh, there is a two secondary ossification nuclei. Uh, the medial physis of the clavicle is 80% of growth. Uh, and the clavicle, uh, as its growth rate that close at around 20 years. There is a very poor, powerful ligament structure and there is, it is very rare to have, uh, in, uh, to have um, um, a rupture of ligament uh, in uh, children. So there is uh, uh, no dislocation. It is always bone or cartilage lesion. Um, the growth rate has a weakness and uh, um, uh, so we, we must uh, think that 
in all time, there is no ligament injury in, in children. So um, first, the most frequent case of uh, fracture of the clavicle is uh, uh, the diaphyseal fracture of the clavicle. It is 80% of cases with uh, very rare complications. You must remember that there is no complication. Uh, just do not be confused with congenital plusoid arthrosis of the clavicle. And there is, a, in most time, um, just uh, a non-operative treatment necessary. Uh, why? Because in all cases, the clavicle is uh, healing. And uh, after 21 days, uh, even 15 days in the, in the newborn, uh, the clavicle uh, ossify with a very big callus, as you see on the slide. But this callus uh, can uh, remodel its shape uh, after in uh, two or three years, and everything will be OK. Um, so in most time, in all time, we can say in all time, um, there is a good functional result. Sometimes there is a, a, an aesthetic result uh, uh, that it is uh, questionable, and uh, uh, sometimes the parents of the kid uh, is uh, um, is complaining about uh, an hypertrophic callus, but the function would be always okay. Um, in case of newborn uh, clavicle fracture, uh, the healing is uh, okay at 15 days with always very good results. The clavicle fracture in the newborn. Um, is an obstetrical fracture, but as you see, after 15 days, there is a very good callus and uh, there is no problem, uh, effect, except if there is a, a brachial plexus uh, palsy, but this condition is very rare. Um, the main problem is uh, not to uh, confuse with uh, a congenital prosarthrosis of the clavicle you see that there is a, a typical aspect of the congenital pseudarthrosis of the clavicle. Uh, you see that the, the bone is, uh, there is a densification of the bone, there is a deformity of the bone, and it's not a fracture, it is a congenital pseudarthrosis. The congenital pseudarthrosis is a rare di disease, and there is a, uh, absolutely uh, no problem with it, uh, except an aesthetic problem. And it is often a familial uh, um, congenital abnormality, as you see uh, this kid with his mother, who have, who have both congenital arthrosis of, of the clavicle. There is no, uh, no uh, treatment to do, except if the patient wants absolutely to, uh, a correction of uh, the uh, clavicle for aesthetic problem. Um, concerning the medial lesion of the clavicle, uh, first of all, it's very rare, 5% five, five lesion of the clavicle. And second, it is a fracture, it's not a ligament injury. Uh, it is, uh, in fact, a Celter 1 lesion. Uh, the epiphysis is, uh, um, is uh, fixed on the sternum, and uh, uh, the, the, the lesion is in the growth plate. Uh, when the deep placement is anterior, it is a Benin disease. But when the, it is a, the, a posterior displacement, uh, it, the uh, problem is possible with a vascular compression, and uh, you need to do treatment. Uh, you see an example of anterior displacement. This anterior displacement is Benin. Uh, and uh, there is uh, generally no problem. Sometimes, uh, the kid <coughs> could complain about, uh, um, about pain uh, and uh, uh, abnormal mobility of the clavicle. So it is very easy to, to stabilize with, uh, with uh, a ligamentoplasty, but it's very rare. Uh, so anterior displacement is benign, and uh, it, it doesn't need uh, a, a um, surgical treatment. Uh, the posterior displacement is uh, more worrying. Why? Because uh, when there is a posterior displacement, it is interesting to do a CT scan. And uh, if you see, as on this slide, the medial clavicle that, is, that, that has a posterior displacement, 
uh, you uh, have to uh, fix the clavicle to the sternum to avoid uh, vascular compression. Uh, it, is, uh, it is important, and when there is a posterior displacement of the clavicle, uh, take care and don't hesitate to um, operate and fix the clavicle uh, with uh, ligamentoplasty. And uh, uh, you can uh, do also a resection of the extremity, the medial extremity of the clavicle. The most important thing is to obtain a fibrous uh, scar between the sternum and the clavicle to be sure that they will not move too much and uh, avoid risk of vascular displacement. Uh, concerning the external end of the clavicle, there is not dislocation between the clavicle and the scapula, uh, between the clavicle and the uh, um, coracoid process. The so ligaments are always intact. Uh, in fact, uh, it is a, a solitary one lesion uh, in, uh, and this solitary wall lesion is associated to the opening um, uh, periosteum, and there is a, a dislocation of the shaft, but the epiphysis is fixed on, on the on the um, on the acromion. So uh, you have to operate this patient, and uh, you have to um, reduce, do an open reduction, and uh, use a chiral stabilization until there is a consolidation between the epiphysis and the uh, diaphysis of the external part of the clavicle. Is, you can see an example in this slide, and uh, you can see that so we place two k wire between the epiphysis that, uh, of the clavicle and uh, the diaphysis to maintain the clavicle in the good position until consolidation. Uh, we must take a great care to bend the chi wire uh, to be sure that there is no migration of the chi wire uh, uh, in, the, in the medial part of the clavicle or the thorax. Um, with this condition, uh, we will obtain a well, always a good result. Uh, here you see another example of uh, uh, such a lesion of the external part of the clavicle, the reduction, the open reduction, the chi wire, and the result, which is okay because always remember that inside there is not ligament injury, the ligament are intact. Concerning the scapula, the scapula fracture are quite are always benign uh, in, uh, in children. Uh, the main problem is that the scapula has a seven nuclei ossification. Uh, and these nuclei operate at different age. You can see uh, that uh, we have uh, on, the, on, the, on this slide with, of the scapula that there are uh, numerous uh, ossi nuclei ossification. And this is the reason of common diagnostic pitfalls when we, you will do an X-ray. But you must remember that uh, uh, scapular fractures are very rare. They need a violent trauma. And uh, uh, in most of cases, they don't need surgical treatment. You can see um, a fracture of, the, of the, in the distal part of the scapula, here a fracture of the uh, um, glenoid process, but there will, there will be no problem. And, uh, the healing is always obtained with, uh, uh, with stabilization, uh, ju just with the Dujarrier stabilization or, or uh, um, every, every kind of stabilization, uh, but not surgery. Uh, the, the problem is to uh, avoid uh, misdiagnosis and particularly uh, the acromial bone nuclei, you see the, that this patient has here the clavicle, uh, here the uh, scapula, and here the acromial uh, bone. Uh, this acromial bone is, a, is a, uh, a congenital abnormality. There is no problem with this aspect, and it's not a fracture of the, uh, of the acromion. It's not a scapular fracture. It is just a congenital uh, uh, abnormality with uh, absolutely no problem. So take care with the fact that uh, there are numerous uh, 
um, physiologic variation in the, scap in the scapula, and there is variation uh, depending on the age uh, due to the fact that the nucleosification appears at a different part of the age, and you must not miss uh, this diagnosis uh, with a, a, a fracture. Concerning uh, the, the humerus, uh, we will treat, we will uh, differ uh, three parts of the, of, the, of the humerus, and uh, um, the proximal uh, humerus, the proximal humerus is uh, uh, also called upper end of the humerus, and uh, there is in the proximal humerus the physis, the metaphysis. All this part is above the uh, the pectoralis major and deltoid insertion, and the medial part is the diaphysis. And uh, uh, at the end, we will speak about the uh, and the distal part of the humerus, uh, and it will be um, the beginning of the elbow fracture. So first, the proximal humerus. The proximal humerus has a, a two main nuclei ossification. At birth, there is no bone in the epiphysis. At six months, there is a, uh, uh, the first nuclei ossification. At two years, there are two nuclei ossification corresponding to the uh, humeral head and the, and the, and the, uh, the great tuberosity. And at 10 years, the two nuclei ossification fused uh, with uh, one, uh, one definitive uh, ossification. So this proximal humerus is uh, uh, very, um, very um, has a high velocity of growth with, the, with 80% of the uh, growth um, of the humerus. Um, the growth plate closure is at uh, 15 um, years old in girl. 16 years old in bone, and uh, um, during all this time, uh, the humerus is growing very quickly. The fracture of the proximal humerus are uh, uh, around about 5% uh, of the child fractures. Um, there are different lesions. Um, in the, with a, there is a Salter 1 lesion. Uh, the fracture is uh, on the gross plate lesion. There are Salter two lesion, growth plate and metaphysial uh, um, <coughs> fracture. There are, uh, in main uh, cases, metaphysial fractures, and uh, sometimes are ra rare are the fracture of the bone apophysis. They are much more rare than in adult fracture. So remember that uh, in quite all time, it is metaphysial or Salter 1 or Salter 2 fracture. What does it mean? It means that in all fractures in children on the proximal humerus, there is no uh, fracture in the articular cartilage, and there is no lesion of the rotatory cuff. Uh, this is very important to decide the treatment. Um, so what this is an example of a Salter 1 fracture. Uh, in, uh, in a newborn, you see that uh, the, uh, the humerus uh, is, uh, uh, not, uh, is not congruent with the, the scapula. This is not due to a dislocation. This is due to a Salter 1 lesion. The femoral head is here and the metaphysial is here. This with, with a uh, non-operative treatment, just immobilization you will obtain a very good treatment because there is a high rate of remodeling bone. Uh, so see uh, this patient, 11 years old, with a bike trauma and uh, uh, important displacement. You see at one month with uh, uh, the displacement and the uh, consolidation, which is beginning. And I emphasize that the uh, periosteum is very sick the periosteum is just on the deltoid muscle, and so the sick periosteum will, will uh, provide a very high capacity of remodeling bone. See at uh, five months, and you see that at, at five months, the remodeling um, process uh, has uh, already begun, and uh, there is almost a normal humerus. So uh, this is a, a, a good reason to avoid a surgical treatment when it is not necessary. 
The proxy numerus may be also a Salter II. So the Salter II uh, in the humerus is due to a fracture which is going lateral to medial through the growth plate and after which is following the articular capsule. And uh, um, that's, uh, this is a proof that the ligaments are much more strong than uh, the bone in the child. And uh, uh, it is uh, the reason why uh, there is not tendon or uh, a muscle lesion. Uh, in case of proximal numerous fr uh, fracture, we can do a close reduction to improve uh, eye displacement. And this is the example that I have already uh, shown. Um, and in case of metaphysial fracture, it is the same problem. Is a metaphysial fracture is very frequent between six and eleven years old, and it is a very good prognosis in all cases. Um, there are a lot of um, uh, different type: uh, one, type two of Salter and Harris, type one before the age of five in all cases, type two after the age of twelve, and. Uh, between 5 and 12, the two types may be uh, possible, uh, but we must remember that uh, we must consider that the, the displacement is, uh, is very, uh, is, um, we can tolerate a very great displacement. There is a classification described by, by Neil, um, considering the patient between 5 and 12, and we, there are four grades but uh, this classification, in my opinion, has not a great importance, except in case of very high displacement uh, that we cannot uh, correct or reduce. So remember that due to the growth plate activity, due to the periosteum, uh, due to the fact that we are uh, not, it, it is not a weight bearing bone, so we must uh, do, give the priority to the remodeling bone and choose not to operative treatment. Uh, so, not operative treatment, what does it mean? It means that we can place a sling, sling and, and swirls, uh, which is uh, and change it regularly one time a week uh, to be comfortable. Uh, but also, hanging uh, arm cast, hanging arm cast is a very good treatment for proximal or humeral fracture. Uh, also, toracobrachial cast is possible. Uh, or quotation splint, or if uh, it is possible, a functional bracing uh, that uh, uh, allow a mobility to the elbow and uh, the wrist. Um, uh, sometimes uh, skeletal traction is uh, useful, but uh, it's in this is uh, the hospitalization is mandatory, so it's not very uh, convenient. Um, if you have to do reduction with a proximal fracture, you must do traction, abduction, and flexion, trying to improve the, the reduction. But uh, sometimes it may be difficult due to the periosteum or the biceps that is into the fracture and uh, um, the, the, the periosteum, the biceps, or the capsule um, not, do, does not uh, um, allow a, a good reduction. But it's, sometimes it's not very, very important. Uh, if you have a very wide, uh, this, this a very great displacement, or in part, in if you have a poly trauma, or uh, if you have a special condition, you must uh, be um, obliged to do a surgery in case also of uh, infection, or if you have to do uh, axillary nerve uh, um, suture. And you can do percutaneous spinning. You can do uh, uh, you can place plate, but the the gold standard actually for a treatment of a, a main displaced uh, fracture is uh, ele elastic uh, central medullary uh, nailing, uh, and uh, you will have a, a lecture concerning this technique. Um, so uh, this uh, uh, technique is. Uh, is well known now with a special uh, 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 nail, and uh, we can place this nail with uh, um, with one lat one uh, lateral, one median, or, or two lateral uh, nail. Uh, it is uh, 
very easy to do. And when we came in Myanmar, we have a possibility to show you uh, what, how, we, how we do uh, uh, intramedullary nailing. And uh, um, it is uh, 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 most, in most of cases a lateral approach with a skin incision. And uh, uh, we, rem we uh, do a small periosteum stripping and we introduce uh, uh, the nail. Uh, with a, 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 a hole, a large hole, first perpendicular, then inclined into the metaphysis before introducing the, the nail. And uh, when we introduce, you know that we introduce the nail already bended and with oscillating movement, we can uh, uh, go uh, until the fracture. Uh, and uh, uh, there are different possibilities if the fracture is already reduced. For example, when you have a, a polytrauma, when you have a thoracic trauma and you want to stabilize the fracture of the humerus, it's quite easy. You just have to push the nail to the uh, great tuberosity, trying to do a divergent fixation to improve the stability. Um, uh, when there is a, 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 a wide displacement, you can uh, uh, correct the, the reduction and after do the stabilization, the procedure is the same. And uh, when you, uh, you have, a, 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 you cannot reduce the fracture and you can try to reduce the fracture with a nail doing a rotation and, and, and push the, the nail after a reduction. Um, but I think that uh, you will have a special lecture concerning this very interesting technique uh, uh, with the, um, with the in intramedullary nailing. Um, a trochobrachial dressing, uh, dressing uh, is necessary uh, uh, between three to five days, uh, and then a sling uh, three, three weeks, uh, sometimes uh, five weeks. The nail uh, will be uh, uh, removed um, after after a few months. And um, <clears throat> when uh, when can we put a nail in the upper uh, humerus extremity? Um, when there is a, a, a very uh, important uh, angulation in adolescent, when the potential of raw modeling bone is uh, is poor at the end of the growth when there is absolutely no contact, when there is a, a school problem, uh, because the nailing uh, will allow the kid to go to school very soon, or when there is a, contra a contradiction of a non-operative treatment in case of open fractures, spine fractures associated, or vascular damage to repair, or multiple trauma or thoracic injury. Every time uh, that we'll uh, have to mobilize the patient very early, uh, we you must consider uh, nailing. So uh, this is an example of a patient uh, at the end of growth with uh, an important replacement and the result after nailing at uh, four months follow-up. Uh, sometimes there is one complication in a proximal humerus fracture. It is an epiphysiodesis. Uh, it is a very rare condition, but it is, this exists. This exists in two conditions. First, in case of child abuse. Uh, in child abuse, uh, when there is a, a direct trauma, a very violent direct trauma on the shoulder, uh, an epiphysiodesis is possible. But also when there is an astomia myelitis, when there is an infection of the proximal humerus, you can see epiphysiodesis. And if there is an epiphysiodesis, you see that uh, uh, growth will be asymmetric with a, a very poor condition uh, in the axis of the, of the bone. So this is a classic complication uh, in, in newborn and in, in uh, little kids with child abuse and infections. So one home message. Uh, the message uh, is that uh, despite its spectacular character, the fracture of the upper end of the humerus in children has an excellent prognosis with a simple immobilization. And, uh, uh, in particular case, uh, you must uh, be able to do surgical correction because the surgical correction with, uh, will be uh, in most time uh, without open reduction of the fracture. Um, concerning the humeral shaft fracture, uh, 
Uh, it is a, the face protection fracture or bike fracture, newborn fracture, and the a treatment will be similar with the proximal humerus. Um, this is an example of a newborn fracture. Uh, and in case of newborn fracture, uh, as the clavicle, you will have a hypertrophic calus uh, very soon. And uh, then after, uh, with the remodeling uh, process, you will obtain a very good result. Um, and other example with a girl uh, 11 years old, uh, and we do a, a cast, a hanging cast, and the hanging cast uh, 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 provide uh, in most of the cases good result. And uh, this is uh, uh, at the day of the fracture. And uh, uh, you see at three months, and uh, with the hanging cast, you see that in this complex fracture, you will obtain uh, this kind of consolidation. And the raw modeling. Uh, consolidation uh, will be so uh, so important that this part will disappear. You see that uh, there is identification is already poor at three months and after the this uh, this part of the of the bone will disappear and the bone will be uh, perfect after two years. Uh, con concerning operative treatment, operative treatment could be uh, necessary. Uh, in the humerus with uh, the similar condition of uh, of the of the proximal parts uh, in case of open trauma with uh, with uh, a nerve or vascular injury uh, and we can do external fixation as in this case with a gunshot uh, surgery gunshot uh, lesion uh, and uh, in sometimes with polytrauma we can do a, a plate and screw uh, and try Middle nailing, but we uh, we prefer to do uh, in such cases uh, uh, elastic and promedial nailing, and uh, uh, we we obtain a better results. So when uh, can we indicate surgical treatment in uh, uh, in diaphyseal fracture? Uh, in case of uh, uh, various more important than uh, thirty percent. In case of shortening, major to three centimeters, and uh, uh, um, in a different paper, uh, they also um, consider the surgical education uh, with the age, and they say that uh, before five years, uh, uh, surgery is uh, necessary only when there is more than seventy degrees of angulation and no contact with the two bone between five and two, 12 years old, uh, surgery is necessary in case of angulation uh, 40 to 70 degrees. And after 12 years old, uh, it's only after, um, it's only when you have more than 40 degrees uh, um, axis angulation. But you must remember that <coughs> in uh, at the at the, at the end, the, the clinical appearance is more important than the radiographic element in the humerus. Humerus is not a weight-bearing bone, so uh, in this condition, uh, the clinical appearance can uh, can be uh, more important. Uh, the procedure is the same at uh, the, that uh, the proximal humerus. Um, there is one particular complication in the diaphyseal humerus fracture, as in the adult, it is a radial nerve proxy. You must know that uh, the complete laceration of the radial nerve is very rare in children, uh, and uh, the, uh, there is a complex and spontaneous recovery uh, in, 18, uh, in, in 80 or 100 percent of cases. So uh, it's, uh, it is uh, very important to wait when you have a, a radial nerve palsy in children because you will obtain spontaneous recovery in most of cases. So uh, with, there is a remaining indication uh, for surgery uh, in a special case. Uh, for example, this patient with a thoracic trauma and the, and the uh, for this trauma, the, the patient was in the ICU, uh, 
uh, and uh, in the ICU, uh, the, um, you will need the, the, uh, the, the doctors ask us to stabilize the humerus to mobilize the patient as much as possible. That's what we have done, and you see the result after four months with a, a good result, but we will obtain probably such a result in, in case of uh, uh, if, if we choose a hanging, uh, hanging cast, uh, it, it is uh, the position in the uh, ICU that uh, indicates the surgical treatment. Uh, concerning pathologic fracture, it is very frequent in this localization. You must know that it is a, a pathologic fracture in most of cases in case of a, a benign tumor, unicameral bone cyst, aneurysmal bone cyst, or fibrous dysplasia. Uh, very, the, the pathologic fracture on uh, malignant tumors are very rare. So, um, in most cases, we have to wait. This is an example of this kid, 12 years old. Uh, there is a cyst of the humeral bone, and uh, we wait. At one month, there is a consolidation. At six months, there is a complete consolidation. And even in, uh, in uh, this uh, case, the, the callus uh, uh, allow the, 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 the cyst healing. Uh, a lot of bone uh, in with the consolidation is in the cyst, and it is one way for the cyst, for, for the cyst to, to uh, have a good calcification and for the cyst to disappear. So there is absolutely no indication of surgery in such cases. Um, you see uh, this patient with a pathologic fracture of the cyst, and you see him four years later. Nothing is done. He has no pathologic uh, fracture anymore. And uh, uh, if you want to uh, to improve the situation, there is uh, not absolutely uh, surgery to do, but you can do just infiltration. You can inject uh, uh, corticoids, for example, in the cyst to obtain healing. Whatever the tumor, the fracture doesn't modify the prognosis, and uh, sometimes it improves the prognosis. So it is always necessary in the first step to wait for consolidation, and when the patient is consolidated, to redo an imagery. Uh, if you do uh, the imagery too early after the pathologic fracture, uh, you will not be able to conclude to the nature of the cyst. You must wait a, a minimum uh, of two months before uh, to do the imagery when you are sure that the pathology fracture is, is consolidated. So this is a very important message. Uh, don't be in a hurry to do imagery. Uh, considering shoulder dislocation, it is very rare before 12 years old. There is a, a uh, when uh, there is a dislocation, uh, it means that there is a high rate of uh, recurrence, but uh, this is uh, very rare. Uh, a particular case is uh, the voluntary dislocation. You see this kid, uh, when you ask her, she's able to uh, dislocate uh, her shoulder. It is a posterior dislocation of the uh, proximal humerus, and uh, she does that uh, when, when she wants, there is a normal imaging. It is often a multidirectional instability with no pain. And it's a game for the kid. Uh, the, it is, the kid is playing to dislocate her shoulder without pain. And uh, the treatment is uh, first to stop this game. Uh, you ask to the, to the kid to stop the game. And uh, after, if uh, the kid stops the game, there is a high rate of, of uh, success of change to be stable after a few months. So uh, uh, remember that uh, such a voluntary dislocation must not be operated, and you uh, have a great chance to to see this kind this dislocation disappear uh, when the patient will be uh, at the adolescence, and uh, uh, after is the dislocation is. Uh, is continue, the kid um, would be uh, painful and you would have to operate him, but never before the age of 14 or 15. When you have authentic 
traumatic recurrent dislocation, you have always in the kid uh, cartilage and bone lesion on imaging, as uh, in these uh, cases. In here, you see uh, a lesion of uh, the humerus and the, and the, uh, and the glenoid uh, cavity. Uh, and the treatment will be similar to uh, the adult with the same procedure. Uh, last part, elbow fracture. Uh, and uh, we will just consider today the distal humerus fracture. We will not treat all the elbow, but just the distal humerus fracture. Tomorrow we will treat uh, dislocation and, uh, and the forearm uh, uh, articular fracture. So considering uh, the humerus and the elbow, uh, you, the complexity of the diagnosis is due to the, that there is six centers of the ossification that appear subsequently in the cartilaginous epiphysis. This is the reason why it is difficult to uh, do the diagnosis sometimes of a fracture. And you see on this slide the different uh, the different <coughs> ossification uh, nuclei uh, that appear. And uh, this, uh, nuclear this nuclei uh, appear at, uh, um, at a different age. You see first the, the capitellum or, or lateral condyle uh, nucleus uh, at six months, and after the radial head, the uh, medial epicondyle, the trochlea, the olecranon, and the external epicondyle uh, that appear at uh, the age of uh, 12 sometimes. And uh, so, you must know uh, this, uh, this uh, data to uh, do a real and good interpretation of an elbow trauma in children. And uh, so you can have this kind of, uh, of, uh, um, of uh, template uh, in your head to, uh, to do the, a good interpretation of the ossification nuclei. It is very important due to the high frequency of this kind of fracture. There are, um, there are um, angles to consider to do a good interpretation of the lesion. First, the Bowman angle between capitular physial line and the long axis of the humerus. This angle is uh, at uh, 70 degrees. Uh, second, um, the uh, humerocondylar angle. Uh, with uh, uh, that is uh, 30 degrees, and uh, it is uh, important because it considers the good anteposition of the capitellum of the humerus, and uh, it is very important in the post operative uh, uh, control to be sure that you have a good anteposition of the capitellum. And another uh, uh, radiographic. Um, information is uh, the uh, anterior uh, humeral line. This anterior humeral line must cut the capitellum uh, in the middle third. And this is also the proof that the capitellum is in the good position. Um, last one, um, the last is uh, uh, the long axis uh, act of the radius, the long axis of the radius must transect the capitellum and this in all radiographic incidents in the frontal plane in the sagittal plane and even if the radi the, the x-ray is not perfect if it is a, a poor quality x-ray this long axis radius will indicate you if there is a, a dislocation of the radial head or not also on the uh, X-ray, you can see if there is an hematrosis or not, uh, because you, will, you can see the displacement of the, the fat pads, and you will know if there is a fracture, uh, intraarticular fracture or not. Um, and uh, you have classification to be sure that uh, you have blood or not in the, uh, in the elbow. Uh, here you can see an elbow with normal uh, line of the fatty tissue, and you have the fat pad seed with a line uh, that is uh, uh, which has uh, an anterior displacement. This proves that the elbow is full of blood, and this proves that there is an hematrosis of the elbow, 
and you can suspect a fracture. So what are the fracture of the, el of the elbow? Uh, the, most, uh, uh, the most frequent fracture is the supracondylar fracture, of course. And uh, uh, you see here the different percentage of the, the other fracture. So considering the supracondylar fracture, it is uh, uh, the, the most frequent fracture. Uh, it appears at the, around seven years old. And it is a metaphysial fracture. You must remember that the supracondylar fracture is not an articular fracture, but a, a pure metaphysial fracture. This fracture appears at the, uh, um, at the um, junction of the coronoid, the coronoid fossa and the olecranon fossa. And at this part, there is a weakness area. And it is at the weakness at the area that the fracture appears when there is an, an, an injury. Two types, one in an extension, uh, the most frequent is when you fall down on the end and uh, there is a posterior displacement of the, uh, of the uh, distal humerus. And uh, in 5% of cases, it is a flexion fracture when there is an injury with a direct trauma of the posterior elbow. Uh, why uh, to why differentiate the two types? It is very important because in the extension fracture, the periosteum is intact, and you will be able to uh, do a, a non-operative treatment. But in flexion fracture, the posterior periosteum is not intact, and it's a, the flexion fracture is a high instable, high instable, instable fracture. So in flexion uh, fracture, you will have to do surgical treatment, but in extension, it will not be necessary in uh, all cases. Uh, considering the extension fracture, there is a, a, stat, uh, there is a classification, classification of Rigo. Uh, the, uh, um, the first rate is a non displex fracture with only a cortical defect. It is very good prognosis, of course. The second uh, grade is uh, when there are two cortical uh, disruption and a posterior displacement, but <clears throat> the, uh, there is no translation, just posterior displacement. And in this case, the, po the posterior periosteum is intact and will allow to do uh, a, a, a close reduction with a blunt uh, technique, for example. So, Grade three is uh, when there is a translation of a rotation, but contact with the two parts of the bone. Um, and uh, the, the grade four is when there is a completely displaced fracture without any contact with the two parts of the bone. Um, the, um, in case of flexion fracture, when there is a, a high rate instability, uh, there is a three rate. Grade one, it is when there is a non displaced and it's very rare. Uh, grade two, it's when there is an anterior displacement. And despite a small displacement, it will need a surgical stabilization. Grade three is when the fracture is completely displaced. And uh, at evidence, uh, surgical treatment will be necessary. So, what is the treatment in extension in, in the grade one? Uh, 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 non-surgical treatment is necessary. Uh, in the grade two, uh, everything and three, everything is possible, but in our experience, and I think that uh, uh, Jerome has the same experience, uh, uh, a blunt method with uh, a flexion of the elbow and stabilization uh, with a small dressing uh, is, is uh, sufficient. But in, in grade four, percutaneous wiring Sometimes with toracobrachis immobilization is necessary. Considering factor infection, the grade one is very rare, rare and a cast will be okay. But in most cases, it stayed in the grade two or three, and the percutaneous wiring will be necessary. All these fractures are healing in the three or four weeks. It's a very uh, quick time for consolidation. Sometimes we can do traction, but it's a very rare condition. In most of cases, we do percutaneous wiring. Uh, we, you must take care to the medial. If you do medial wiring, uh, 
uh, you, you will have to do a mini approach to the medial epicondyle to avoid the damage of the ulnar nerve. On the lateral condyle, you can place two lateral wires. When these two lateral wires are parallel, strictly parallel, it will provide a good stability. Uh, you can do uh, sometimes one lateral and one intramedullary wise. In Europe, it's not a very useful uh, indication. And you also can do a descending and intramedullary wiring. It is possible. It provides a good stability, but uh, 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 it needs a, a long time of uh, uh, X-ray radioscopy uh, during a surgical procedure, and we uh, don't use it uh, daily. We prefer to do um, to do percutaneous wire. Uh, so example of uh, uh, cross wiring, uh, which uh, a good result, it is a, a, a grade uh, three uh, of uh, supraconductor fracture and uh, the good result. Uh, you can do a <coughs> lateral and intramedullary nailing with also a good result with a grade four. Uh, you can do um, uh, uh, the same procedure in flexion fracture. You see that uh, uh, we obtain a good result uh, with, uh, with uh, such technique. So what are the complications? Vascular complications are rare. Um, when you have a, a vascular complication, uh, you are, you, there are different uh, procedure to do. First, you must reduce very quickly and wait. Uh, if there is no ischemia uh, uh, after uh, uh, re reduction and wiring, if there is no ischemia and if you have a good pulse, uh, all will be okay. If you have no ischemia and you have not a good uh, radial pulse, uh, you will have to check very closely your patient during two days and you must keep the patient in the ward to check the, the end and to be sure that there is no uh, sub ischemia and risk of uh, compartment syndrome. And if there is absolutely no, re no uh, recuperation of any ischemia, you will have to do a US Doppler and uh, <coughs> arteriography. And if you have not Doppler or arteriography, and there, if there is an ischemia, you will have to control surgically the uh, artery after uh, obtaining a good stabilization, you see here an arteriography with a disruption of the, of the flow uh, of the blood uh, on, the, on the fracture. The artery can be disrupted, but uh, there are sometimes dissections of the artery that provide such ischemia. Other complication, nervous lesion, first radial, medial, sometimes ulnar, or enterosus anterior enterosus nerve. Uh, in such cases, you do reduction, wiring, and you wait. Uh, if there is no recuperation, you do an uh, electromyography at six, at three months, but you must remember that the prognosis is very good. It is the uh, same situation as the radial nerve in the diaphysis. Uh, in such uh, cases, you will have a, a, a good, uh, re, re, a, a good uh, recuperation. Um, concerning the complication, um, uh, sometimes uh, you will have to check uh, um, when you will have post-operative complication as, and unfortunately, uh, it is a condition that, uh, uh, that uh, can appear if you don't check the ulnar nerve when you will place a medial wire. You see uh, uh, the, the ulnar nerve on this slide, and the and the wire is just uh, just uh, close um, to the ulnar nerve, and this uh, provide um, and this provide a palsy. So in such cases, you have to do uh, you have to remove the nail, uh, do remove the chi wire, uh, do neurolysis and anterior transposition. But the prognosis is not very good. The most important complication in supraclinal fracture is the compartment syndrome, also called Volkmann syndrome. And uh, this is the reason why, in any doubt, uh, 
uh, of uh, the the quality of the, the quality of the vascularization, or if there is, uh, in, or if you see the fracture late, you must check the patient very closely, and uh, don't hesitate to to keep the patient in the ward of your hospital one or two nights to be sure that you will not have a compartment syndrome if there are difficulties to uh, to extend the fingers uh, after <coughs> such a surgery uh, or such an in immobilization you will must remove cast remove immobilization and open the aponeurosis so uh, avoid this kind of complication of compartment syndrome because there is no a reversibility of such a complication. It is the most important complication of the uh, supracondylar fracture or the uh, forearm fracture. You can have a complication due, due to uh, uh, internal rotation of the distal fragment. If you have not a perfect reduction of the rotation, you will see such uh, deformity. It is what we call cubitus varus, ulnar varus, and uh, you see normal for a normal arm upper and here you see varus. This varus is due to the uh, to the rotation of the distal fragment. This rotation uh, is uh, associated to a normal flexion and extension and a normal prosupination. So it's just an aesthetic disease. It's not a functional disease. So if there is a, a problem with uh, with the patient. You can propose an osteotomy, but if there is no problem, it's not absolutely necessary to do surgery. Uh, this is an example of correction. Uh, the, the, the previous patient has been operated with an osteotomy. We, there is, it is a subtraction of osteotomy, and uh, the, the cosmetic result is OK. <coughs> okay. Other, other example of uh, uh, now virus and uh, osteotomy. Um, sometimes you can have also, and it's uh, more, uh, more uh, um, it is, uh, it's not a very, uh, it's a poor complication. It's when you have uh, malignon in extension, you see that in this case, there is a poor angle between the capitellum and the axis of the humerus. And if you drop and, and if you do the, the anterior line of the humerus, you can see that this line doesn't cut the capitellum in the middle third. Uh, there is a retroversion of the capitellum. And the, why is it, uh, is it uh, in trouble? Because there is a lack of flexion and an excess of, of extensions. And sometimes uh, it is, uh, it is um, not possible to recover because there is a poor growth potential in the distal humerus. Remember that 80% of the uh, humeral growth is, the, is in the proximal humerus, 20% in the distal humerus. And so there is not enough uh, growth potential to have a good remodeling uh, of the uh, distal humerus. And this lack of uh, flexion will, will stay, except if you do osteotomy. Um, other complication in when uh, you have uh, um, an anterior callus uh, or uh, an anterior part of the proximal bone that is uh, that provides a lack of reduction. Um, in such cases, if there is a, a, even if there is a poor potential of growth, uh, it will be possible that this uh, uh, bone uh, will disappear or will. Uh, 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 with the, or with the rose, the, the bone will stay, but will be uh, far from the elbow after two or three years, and it will be possible to recover the uh, lack of flexion. So it's brief, it, it is uh, better to wait uh, before to uh, do a resection of this bone, uh, because sometimes uh, the, after two or three years, everything is okay. Uh, poor complication, um, but it's a small one. It's a benign complication where there are fat inclusion of the callus uh, with the remodeling uh, process. Uh, it will disappear. It's absolutely uh, not a problem. Um, 
when there are iterative fractures, uh, sometimes there will be a gross perturbance, and this is an example of a, a, a gross perturbance of the uh, distal radius due to the uh, uh, lesion of the gross plate and, uh, and, and an important deformity after three supraglandular fractures. Uh, considering a, a medial process fracture, it is an extra articular fracture. It is, uh, 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 there is a frequency uh, uh, of 10% of the fracture, uh, sometimes in, 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 in half cases associated with elbow dislocation. It is, uh, in fact, a uh, sort of three or four uh, fracture, and uh, the prognosis will be good. The mechanism is due to uh, an impair extension and vanigus, and there is a, uh, and the apophysis uh, will be uh, um, will be disrupted uh, with uh, the uh, the medial muscle of the elbow. There are, uh, there is the classification of Watson Jones. Uh, then the classification is. Uh, um, um, the classification considers the displacement. When there is minimally displacement, minor to five millimeters is a grade one. When uh, uh, it is more than five millimeters, is a grade, grade two. Um, and uh, uh, you must also consider that sometimes, in case of gauge three, you have intraarticular incarceration of the um, medial. Uh, process and uh, the, if there is intraarticular uh, incarceration, it is a, a real problem, and you will have to correct chirurgically uh, the process. And the grade three is when the uh, median process fracture is associated with uh, elbow dislocation. So um, the treatment is uh, uh, in case of grade one uh, fracture with. Uh, a displacement minor to five millimeters, uh, it is a, a, a cast uh, in pronation. But in all the other cases, like two, three, four, you have to <coughs> do an open reduction and an internal fixation with a pin, with a, a, a screw, with a suture. But you have to fix the, the medial process. Uh, and uh, uh, you will have to take care of the ulnar nerve, and after five or six weeks, it will be okay. This is an, ex an example with a, a girl with a, a medial process, um, medial epicondyle uh, in disruption, and uh, uh, you see that uh, after uh, suture, uh, medial approach and suture with, uh, uh, with the suture of the uh, uh, of the of the fragment, uh, you will have a good result. But if you do also orthopedic treatment, you will have the same result. So you must consider this uh, rule of uh, five millimeters displacement. If you consider this young girl, there is less than five millimeters displacement. So we wait and at least we obtain a, uh, an acceptable result with um, an acceptable result with a, a, a <clears throat> an hypertrophic medial process, but without any trouble. So uh, the orthopedic treatment can be considered. In all the other cases, you have to fix with uh, an osteosynthesis uh, as much as possible. Different type of osteosynthesis, crew, chi wires. But uh, the most important thing to do is to avoid ulnar injury. The ulnar nerve is just near <coughs> the medial, uh, uh, the medial epicondyle, and uh, you have to, to 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 take care of that. Um, if you don't operate high rate displacement of the elbow, you will see sometimes uh, hypertrophic epicondyle. And the patient is coming not to see you at the clinics, not for a pain or um, not for uh, the, the function. The function of the elbow is okay, but they come because they have a palsy beginning at the ulnar nerve due to the ulnar nerve irritation. Um, other complication is the non union of the medial epicondyle, as you see uh, in this X-ray after uh, a few years after the fracture. And if you have non-union, at the same time, the ulnar nerve will be in a progressive palsy. 
and uh, the patient will begin to be painful. Other fracture of the distal humerus is the lateral condyle fracture. The lateral condyle fracture is uh, an intra-articular fracture. It's different with the um, uh, medial process. It is an intra-articular fracture, and in the so it is a solitaire four fracture. When on the X-ray we we'll see a small part of bone on the lateral condyle, you must imagine that the cartilage is also possibly disrupted. It is a fracture that provides, in case of push-up uh, uh, extension, when the radial heads bump against the lateral condyles, and uh, uh, when it push up in flexion, uh, you can also uh, have a, a associated an, an olecranon bump, that, uh, and the olecranon bump will, uh, pro will provide the lateral condyle fracture. So this fracture could appear in extension due, due to the radial head or in flexion due to the olecranon uh, bump. And uh, when uh, there is a pull-off in extension, various and supination, the epicondylar muscle will pull away the lateral condyle. The, this is very important because the, the uh, displacement of the fracture is sometimes secondary. First, you don't see the uh, displacement, but after, <clears throat> with the epigondal muscle, uh, they pull away the fracture and the displacement will, be, uh, will appear. So in the, uh, in the grade, grade one of such a fracture, there is a non-displacement. Uh, this is uh, the, what you see here, the, the small linear, but you, you, you must uh, remember that this uh, fracture is in fact a fracture that go through the cartilage until the uh, until the joint until the joint in case two is it is when there is a displacement of the fracture and here you see perfectly that uh, it is a, a complete disruption of a, a part of the article of the joint the articular cartilage is disrupted and uh, uh, at the grade three uh, there is a complete rotation due, uh, due to the traction of epicondylar uh, of, uh, of uh, epicondylar muscle, which provide a translation and rotation of the condylar fragment. And uh, uh, also you can see also on the Milch classification, which uh, considers the partial fracture, the total fracture through the, through the joint, and uh, the total fracture with displacement. Um, in the Milch type 2, the fracture could also go through the trochlea, and in such cases, it's a, a very important fracture uh, of, uh, of, the, of the elbow. How the, the difficulty is to know if the cartilage is disrupted or not, because in the X-ray, you, you don't see if the cartilage is disrupted, but you can see that uh, uh, a good technique is the echography. With the echography, you can see that uh, the cartilage is disrupted or not, and uh, that can uh, help you to decide if you do a surgical treatment or not. So the treatment in the grade one is uh, a possible orthopedic treatment, but we must do great care uh, with our radiographic surveillance to check that there is not secondary displacement. Uh, if you are not sure, uh, you do, uh, if any doubt, a percutaneous wiring of this fracture. And in the grade uh, two or three, you do open reduction and the wiring. You must do wiring if there is the, any doubt in the lateral condyle fracture. Remember that it is an articular fracture. So the heading time is uh, longer than the longer. Um, if you compare to the other fracture of the elbow in children, it is four to six weeks to, uh, avoid, to obtain an, an, an healing time. In an example uh, of orthopedic treatment, you have a, a fracture. It, it is an incomplete fracture, and uh, uh, the orthopedic treatment will has, uh, provide a good result. Uh, surgical treatment with, uh, with uh, wiring with also a good result and the full mobility after six months. You see different treatment with a 
wiring with a good reason. Uh, but uh, you can also use a screw when the it is an ad when the, the kid is uh, very near the end of the growth, uh, one or two screw as you can as you as you can see. Uh, sometimes there is an hypertrophic callus or a, a defect of reduction that provide a, a poor extension. But in most of times, uh, this recover after a few years. What are uh, concerning the complication of the lateral condyle fracture? The complication is uh, the secondary displacement. Uh, it appears in case of orthopedic treatment, so you must monitor, you must check the uh, post, uh, the, you must check the X-ray at seven days, at fifteen days, and it is often difficult to uh, be sure that there is not a secondary displacement. You see this patient with a non-displaced lateral fracture, and you see after six weeks uh, that there is, uh, when you remove the cast, a displacement, and this is a poor result. So if you have any doubt, don't hesitate to uh, uh, operate this patient with lateral condyle fracture. Um, this is as this is an other uh, um, example that uh, show you that. Uh, uh, when you will have uh, chosen uh, uh, an orthopedic treatment and do a cast, it is very difficult to check what happened uh, in the cast. That's the reason why we prefer uh, to do in most of cases, in vain, even in case of non displaced fracture, to do a chi uh, uh, surgery. And you see that, uh, for example, in this patient, despite uh, uh, the control at uh, day one, day, day 10, day uh, 17, uh, 28, at six weeks, when you remove the cast, you, observe, you see that there is a, a displacement that you have not seen uh, with uh, uh, X-ray into the cast. Uh, other complication, cubitus varus in arvarus is due to the lack of reduction, if you have not a good reduction, uh, or, and the cubitus varus uh, is due to sometimes pseudarthrosis. Pseudarthrosis is not rare in case of a lateral condylar fracture, and uh, you must operate this patient because sometimes they will uh, uh, complain of ulnar palsy, when the valgus will uh, be worsened and worsened. And after a few years, uh, ulnar palsy uh, is a risk for this, for such a fracture. Um, I already seen, I, I already said that uh, pseudarthrosis after orthopedic treatment is not rare uh, if you have a, di a secondary displacement. And uh, if uh, there is, even in case of minimally uh, secondary displacement, uh, you can uh, have a, a, a pseudarthrosis. This is an example of pseudarthrosis. Uh, uh, the day of uh, uh, the fracture, so with a non-displaced lateral condylar fracture, six weeks of the cast is, uh, is stopped. There is a, the classic secondary displacement. At eight weeks, you see that the displacement worsened, and at five months, you show that there is a pseudarthrosis, and you will have to do a very difficult surgery to, to recover. This is the example of the surgery for such a case. The, the surgeon has to do the uh, uh, olecranon osteotomy to see perfectly the lateral condyle and to do an osteosynthesis. And it will have finally a good result, but it is a difficult surgery. And uh, um, if he has done a very early surgery, uh, uh, with uh, two kinds, it will not add such a problem. So um, um, take care to the pseudarthrosis, and uh, uh, you must uh, fix very careful the the fracture uh, in any doubt. Um, you can also have a trophic problem. Uh, the condyle uh, could uh, consolidate with an hypertrophy, but that this hypertrophy doesn't affect the function, so it's just an aesthetic problem. Um, <clears throat> other complication is when you have an epiphysiodesis of the trochlea. You have seen that uh, in milch uh, type 2, uh, you, there, are, uh, there, are, um, there is a fracture through the trochlea, and if you have uh, 
uh, an epiphysiodesis, you could obtain this kind of deformity this, that is called fishtail deformation. This deformation is due to the lack of growth of the central part of the <coughs> humeral of the of the uh, distal uh, humerus, and the, this lack of growth is uh, uh, provides this kind of deformity. But uh, in many times, the function is not so bad, and we doesn't do uh, do uh, uh, more treatment. Uh, possibly you can have a, a vascular necrosis of the lateral condyle. So take care when you operate this patient to um, not uh, disinsert, uh, not do disinsertion of the epicondylar muscle because the vessel uh, of the lateral condyle are uh, through the epicondylar muscle. And uh, um, if you do too extensive surgery, uh, it will be uh, difficult to avoid uh, necrosis. Uh, stiffness uh, uh, appear often after uh, uh, lateral condyle due to a lack of flexion of extension. <clears throat> but uh, always uh, you will have a normal pronosupination, so the function will be good. And in most of cases, when you will have stiffness in the elbow of a patient uh, in children, you will uh, obtain an improvement after after a few years. <clears throat> Consider very quickly medial condyle fracture. It is very rare. It is a sort of four fracture. It appears in case of push off inflection with the olecranon, or uh, when uh, the patient has a, 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 when in, the patient falls on the head with elbow in extension and valgus. And in such cases, it's not the epicondyle. The epicondyle is a small extraarticular part of the medial column. It is all the con medial condyle that is separated. So it is an intraarticular fracture. Uh, there is also a midge classification that consider the medial condyle uh, when, the, when the fracture terminates through the trochlea and the, um, when the medial condyle terminates through the uh, capitulo trochlear blue. Uh, there are also classification of another author or also uh, depending of the importance of the of the displacement, but this classification has not a very great interest. So treatment is uh, in case of non-displaced fracture uh, uh, cast, but in case of <coughs> medial fracture, uh, uh, you have to do uh, open reduction and fixation with K and Y is uh, the same uh, process as in the lateral condyle fracture. The complication is uh, ulnar palsy, but also medial condyle necrosis that provide a, a cubitus varus or pseudarthrosis. We, have in the, we are in the same situation that the lateral condyle. At last, we have uh, the capitulum, capitulum fracture. The frequency is uh, very rare. It's when the patient falls on the end, when the elbow is flexed. Uh, and uh, in uh, valgus, uh, it is the radial head that provide uh, the uh, capitulum fractures when the, uh, because uh, during the trauma, the radial head uh, push the capitulum. Uh, the, there is a classification that considers the anterior displacement of the articular surface of the, of the supernal bone. Uh, and, um, and there is a, a disclassification uh, we can consider that uh, 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 even at all the grade of the fracture, uh, wiring will be necessary. Um, so this is an example of a patient with a capitulum fracture, uh, age nine uh, year old, uh, uh, and osteosynthesis has been uh, performed uh, with a, a good result. But you must remember that the capitulum fracture is uh, not a good fracture, and there is a high risk of necrosis with a such fracture. This is another example with a, you see the, the technique that there is a posterior fixation through uh, the, the distal humerus uh, to, do, uh, to do the fixation of the anterior capitulum. It's a difficult surgery. Uh, even in uh, adults, 
and there is a high risk of capitulum necrosis. You see here a typical capitulum necrosis, and the radial head is not articulated uh, with anything. And uh, this provides a uh, very great stiffness in, in extension. Um, at uh, last, uh, at last, uh, uh, just a word considering sub and intercondylar fracture. Uh, it is a rare condition, but in case of uh, uh, a very violent trauma, uh, you can see as in adult uh, sub and intercondylar fracture, and you have to do. A fixation with a chi wire, uh, sometimes with plate. Uh, don't hesitate in such cases to do olecranon osteotomy or triceps uh, section to see exactly what happened and to uh, do a good reduction. Uh, in case of obstetrical fracture, you must know that obstetrical fracture is a rare condition, but you must know that it is that uh, such condition exists. In, uh, remember that uh, in children, when you have uh, an aspect of dislocation of obstetrical uh, uh, trauma in the elbow of the of the newborn, the newborn has never dislocation of the elbow. The newborn has a Salter one epiphysiolysis of the distal uh, of distal epiphysis of the radius. Uh, you see this patient uh, that uh, had uh, 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 an, an obstetrical fracture of the elbow, and you see uh, the, the aspect at three weeks with a hypertrophic callus, and you see at seven months there is nothing, the mobility is completely full, and the result is okay. And to conclude, remember the pulled elbow uh, or nurse made elbow, very common before the age of four, when the when the mother uh, uh, is uh, um, is uh, uh, applied a longitudinal pull at the upper limb, uh, and uh, the the kid is uh, suddenly very painful with the the end in pronation. And uh, it is a very frequent condition, but completely benign. The pathogeny is uh, the, that the annular fragment is partially torn and displaced onto the radial end. And it's quite easy to, to treat. Uh, you must do, uh, um, you, you, you must plate the patient in traction and then in uh, um, supination and flexion. So you extend the elbow, you do a supination, and you do a flexion, and you will. Uh, and in most of cases, the patient would be okay. If he's not immediately okay, you can do a cast uh, during one week in this position of uh, uh, supination, and you will have a good result. After four years, the uh, this kind of uh, of uh, a subluxation disappear, and the prognosis is always very good. So that is the end of the part one of the, this lecture considering uh, the upper limb. So uh, the most important thing for you is to uh, check and remember the elbow anatomy, part, and particularly the, uh, the nucleosification because as the first step of your, con of your um, job of uh, uh, surgeon, you must do the right diagnosis and you must not hesitate between nucleosification in children and real fracture. Thank you very much. Hello, thank you, thank you, Professor. The maple made in Seattle, the water tap out here, and it made me up. Okay. That was kind of maintenance, we let you know, my point of view.
Hello. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ju. And uh, I think uh, Professor Jerome, because he's also here. And uh, 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 thank you so much. You know, I, I, while I was listening to the, your talk, uh, that, that brought me back 25 years, last 25 years, with a fool of hell at that time. Hey, do, who are internet life? Life, 